Hello, it's me, Laura, and today I wanted to discuss my experience as a reader for a literary agency, and I thought I would point out some of the mistakes I saw writers make in their manuscripts, things that would make me think twice about recommending that the agent I was reading for read it too. So, I will preface this by saying I read mainly for middle grade and young adult, as that's what the agent I worked for represented, and I really only read YA since I'm not as familiar with middle grade, so I will be discussing things in young adult specifically, though they apply to all age ranges, I'd say. All genres, all categories, general good advice for your manuscript. So let's just dive on in. So one of the common issues I would see in young adult was that the central conflict of the story was relating to adults as opposed to teens, meaning a lot of the conflict and big plot twists had to do with things their parents had done or things in their family history as opposed to things in the present timeline of the teen's lives. It's not really a problem to do this and obviously you want to develop your backstory and create layers of intrigue and just deepen character development, but at the same time if the central conflict of a novel revolved around a parental secret that didn't directly affect the life of the main character, which is a teen, it would take me out of the story because I would ask myself, well, why isn't the adult telling the story? Why is the teen the main character here? And if the teen is constantly digging into adult storylines, you're missing a lot of that nice, juicy, young adult interaction because they're too busy investigating something, you know, that has to do with an adult and maybe they have their love interest or their friend, but the thing is if it's not directly affecting everyone, it would kind of pull me out of the story because you would just wonder why the adults weren't the ones addressing these issues or why wasn't another adult taking care of business. So I would find in a young adult book, you'd obviously want young adults to be central to the biggest conflict in the book. And more specifically, a lot of the time, if it was a thriller, sometimes it would be something like, oh, the parents are on the police force or are in the FBI or another government agency. And this is why like the whole conflict of the story is set into action, which is fine on the one hand, but you have to bring it back down to the teens level. Otherwise, like, why not just write an adult book, you know? The next problem I'll talk about is more applicable to basically every book, but it would be pulling out a surprise villain or plot twist or monster in your third act that has been in no way mentioned or hinted at previously in the manuscript. So like, yes, for your third act, you want to have like a new conflict. You need to set your character on a new path. But if you're going to bring up a new villain or throw in a monster or throw in some, you know, climactic event, you need to at least lay the groundwork and hint at it. Otherwise, like when I was reading, I would just be like, did this just totally come out of nowhere? This doesn't make any sense. Like, what are the stakes here? If like I didn't even know this was coming, that takes all the tension out of the rest of the story. And at that point, you don't really trust the writer because you think, well, anything can happen. So it deflates everything instead of ramping up everything. Like you might think throwing in like a crazy sea monster to your um, beach read might ramp up the stakes, but it's like, well, if you know, you want to do that, you have to say like, there's some weird eggs that have been found on the coastline, or you have to say there were rumors of these creatures. You can't just throw something in and expect it to be exciting just because in and of itself that thing is exciting. You gotta lay the groundwork, and this was a common thing I'd see in a third act. So basically if you want to throw in something crazy, you just have to hint at it. You don't have to be really heavy-handed about it, but if you're going to introduce a new element, you have to sprinkle those breadcrumbs in for the reader. So that actually ramps up the tension entirely because the whole time you're thinking and wondering, what is that sort of random piece of information about? Is that relating to something? And then whammo bammo jammo, it was all worth it because it was all leading up to something. Another thing that would turn me off when reading was when I could tell something was a little too heavily inspired by another book or work or character because it just comes off kind of as a blatant ripoff. It's fine to be inspired by other art. That's what we all do. That's, you know, you take in movies, books, music, etc. But you have to put your own spin on it because there's all too often 
you would just say like, oh, this is obviously a magic school based upon the magic school from that very famous book and there's not really enough of a difference. Or you would say, you know, oh, this character is an awful lot like that character from that other book with just basically maybe one difference. You have to make something your own. Like fan fiction is a great learning tool, but if you're submitting to agents, you want to make sure the thing has become your own and you should maybe be able to see, oh, there's still X, Y, Z tiny things that come from that thing I loved that I incorporated into my character, but it has to be your character. Because when I see that, inevitably, usually if they've taken one element a little too far in terms of inspiration, there are other elements from that same source. So things in the book become less exciting and less fun because they become predictable because you're seeing exactly where they're coming from. So this is not new advice, but it's that's just one of the things that would bug me is when it's like, oh, this is very clearly like this, this is very clearly like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, and this is an Oz story, but it follows almost to a T what happens there. Just make it your own. And the next thing that would make me not want to recommend the agent take a second read was repetition. Usually this means like action sequences are very repetitive, meaning like, uh, I like a sword fight, but if you're gonna have three big sword fights over the course of your book, make them different. Like you don't want to watch a movie that has the same fight sequence three times. You love to watch new and innovative fight sequences. You can mix up the setting. You can mix up the weapons. You can mix up the timeline. You can slow down moments. You can speed up moments. You just don't want monotony through repetition in terms of anything. And that includes conversations. Like you don't want to have your characters rehashing information. Um, for example, if you have a big sequence that happens in one chapter, it would get tedious when you'd start the next chapter and have a recap of what just happened. This is a lot more common than I realized because I just didn't think about it, but there were a lot of manuscripts where the beginnings of chapters would just be recaps of what just happened and it would just slow the story down and there's no reason to recap because you were there, unless you're doing like a dual point of view thing and then you have to be a little more careful because if you have a character who's actually recapping, you gotta keep it speedy, you gotta do a lot of telling, not showing, like you don't need to go through the whole sequence of events because we, the reader, know what happens. So if you have to have your character rehash it, do that, rehash, don't repeat, if that makes sense. Like condense, keep it moving, um, and try to vary everything, action, dialogue, sentence structure, uh, you know, you wanna keep your reader interested and repetition does not it's not interesting, folks. And the final thing that would give me definite pause from recommending a manuscript was when sensitive issues were not addressed properly in a book. I don't think a book has to be like a moral guide by any means, but if you're going to have like a student have a relationship with a teacher that has to be addressed in some way, it can't just be completely casual. Someone at some point in that story has to point out the problem with that, and that was a very common one actually in young adult, was teacher-student relationships. And if it's well handled, you know, that's it right there in the word, it's well handled, but I would find a lot of the time things like that would be treated very casually or as though they were not unusual or as though they were just the norm, which it's not. And again, it's not your character's job to be your authorial voice, but if nowhere in the book at all is there someone or something somewhat addressing that? It's gonna stand out. Generally, it would refer to like inappropriate relationships like that, um, but it could also be just, you know, I'd read books where you could read a hundred pages and there are, you know, people of all genders in the book, but only men would be getting all the dialogue and other characters would just be treated as stereotypical props. And it was just like, this isn't reflecting reality. Um, you just want your books to reflect reality to an extent. Um, you need to have a certain level of representation because uh, otherwise it's, it's just, it, that's, it's weird. It's just weird. But I, I strayed a little from my point being like sensitive issues should be addressed in some way, shape or form. Like you don't have to have your main character have a huge revelation about it. Like maybe that's not what your story's about. That's fine, but it's good if someone points it out 
somewhere or it's indicated that like that's not okay. I know that's hard and I'm not exactly sure how one does that saying that, you know, obviously character voice is not authorial voice. So it's a tough balance to strike because you also don't want people just expositionally being like, I think that is bad that this is happening. Like you don't want that, but you don't want to normalize something um, in the world of the book. Unless that's the point of the book. It's complicated, but I guess I'm just thinking of certain books I read where it was clear that the author didn't know uh, what they were saying was a problem. Uh, and it's just like, be sensitive to current issues, be sensitive to old issues. Just be, be a sensitive person. That's a good tip for writing and a good tip for life. So those are the five big things I would see that would give me pause when I was an agency reader. I hope that helped you in some way or was at least interesting. Let me know if you have any questions and I can talk about this stuff a little more because it was really fun to be a agency reader and do readers reports because you learn a ton as a writer and I highly recommend um, getting an internship or a job doing that uh, if you can because you just see so many different issues and you come to realize what works and what doesn't work um, and it's, it's fun. It's just fun to read. So I will see you all next time.